Hey, greetings. It's Father Mark. I'm here at St. Mary's Church, uh, and I just wanted to send you a real brief message. Uh, yesterday, which was Wednesday, came and went, and I really missed you. And even though I knew we weren't going to be together because it's spring break, uh, my heart was just a little bit empty because you mean so much to me. And so here on Thursday, I was thinking that I'd send you a note just to let you know uh, that, you are, uh, that you are in my heart. And the fact that next week, uh, spring break will be over, but you get to experience something that's going to be pretty cool. Some remote learning. Your teachers are going to be coming to you uh, either on your television or on your computer or, or iPads. A whole new experience of, of what it means to to learn about God's creation and about all the wonderful things that bring us together uh, as a human family. Um, but next Wednesday, when we don't meet, my heart's gonna be empty again. Um, and so I'll send you another message as well, uh, maybe, two or, maybe two or three, because you are often on my heart and in my mind. But you know, this morning, um, I was reading morning prayer here at, uh, at the church, and uh, we read a story that's really familiar to us, and I wanted to share it with you. Um, we know it as the story of the feeding of the 5,000. Um, it's found in Mark and Matthew and Luke. Uh, today's story that I read was from Mark's Gospel. And it told, it, uh, it told the story about how Jesus had been teaching the people and that he grew tired and, and needed a break, and so he, he loaded up the disciples, and he himself also got into a boat, and they, they set sail uh, to what the, the scripture says is a deserted place. Now, the deserted place could be uh, also known as a wilderness place or a lonely place, but the, the, the purpose that the story is saying is that that Jesus just needed a rest. But the people spotted him and they guessed where he was going and they ran ahead of him so that when he and his disciples reached the shore again, a crowd was waiting. And instead of getting back in the boat and trying to find another lonely place to go, Jesus got out and began to teach the people. And as the day uh, grew old and evening began to arrive, the disciples were concerned about where the people would get food to eat. And they, they asked Jesus to send the crowd away to the towns and the villages that surrounded the place so that they could buy something to eat. But Jesus surprised them. And he looked at them and he says, will you give them something to eat? Well, I wish that I could have seen the faces of the disciples when Jesus told them that, that they should give the people something to eat because when the disciples looked out at the crowd, there were at least 5,000 people. And surely they thought, he's got to be out of his mind. How are we going to feed so many people? But Jesus told the disciples to go out and take a look to see what they had. And when they came back, they said that they had some bread and some fish. And do you remember how many loaves of bread the disciples had? Do you remember how many fish they had? Well, if you said five loaves of bread and two fish, you were right. Okay. But still, when they looked out at 5,000 people, and they, they had to think that, that this was just crazy. But Jesus took what they had and he blessed it and he broke the bread and he, he gave the bread and the fish to the disciples so they could distribute the bread to the crowd that had sat down on the grass. And when all was said and done and when everyone had eaten and were well filled, they gathered up the fragments that were left over. And there were 12 baskets full of fragments. Do you remember a few weeks ago when 
we told the story of the woman whose daughter was sick and Jesus said that it that it wasn't right to feed the children's bread to the dogs do you remember what her response was that even the dogs get to eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table can you make the connection in these stories that the crumbs that fall from the master's table are in abundance baskets full this woman understood the goodness of god what the disciples didn't understand is that so often they think or they thought and we think that what we have is just too little that it, it's only enough for ourselves and when we think that what we have is so scarce we get greedy we get miserly we don't want to share because we're afraid that what we have isn't enough for us. But what this story tells us that what we have is enough for a lot of people. And that God will take what we have and bless it so that when we share it, a crowd can be satisfied. That God can take the little that we think we have and turn it into an abundance. And that is something that we always need to remember of how much God has given us and how much God can use us. It's one of the reasons why at the beginning of chapel, I always ask you to raise your hand if you are a holy person. Well, you are a holy person and you're not just holy at St. Mary's School in chapel. You know, you're holy when you are at home you're holy at the dinner table or when you're getting ready for bed. You're holy when you engage in athletic events or academic events. You are holy if you are a musician. Okay. Because God has set you apart for a special purpose. And that purpose is to share what you have with the world so that God can bless the world through you. And whenever you're feeling small and inadequate, where you don't think that what you have is worth sharing or can or could be shared, remember that the power of God washes over you and blesses you and that your efforts, when given to the glory of God, will leave basketfuls left over. You are a holy person set apart by God for a special purpose. Every day when you wake up, just remember that what you have is special and blessed. And don't forget to share it with others. I'm looking forward to seeing you in a few weeks when we regather. I want you to know, however, that you reside in my heart, that I am blessed by you I love seeing you, I love being with you, and I look forward to the time when God will bring us back together again. Until that time, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.